Hey Jonesy Babes and I'm not a Miss Jonesy Babes. Welcome back to my channel. So today we want to talk about Kelly Matthews and that's um, Wade Wilson's ex-girlfriend. So, you know, she has a right to tell her story. She has a right to tell people what she went through with Wade. I don't see nothing wrong with that. But it just seems like whenever I heard a phone call, you know, Wade will always say, oh, she's trying to get, you know, noticed or she's trying to, you know, hog the media. No, she's telling her story because you you gave her that story to tell, actually. If you didn't try to harm her in any way, she would have nothing to say about it. But you actually gave her that story to tell. So it's like you gave Mila a story to tell. But the difference is Mila is talking to you on the phone. She's picking up the phone for you, calling you baby and all this kind of stuff. But Kelly is not doing it. Kelly blocked your jail number. And that's good for her. But she has a right to tell her story. And I don't think it's cool for Mila to sit up there and talk to Wade and call Kelly a fat whore. I don't like that at all. That's, she didn't have to call out her name. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Before I do, I just want to say this real quick. Listen, I do commentary. I'm not a professional narrator, okay? Some of you like my voice and some of you don't like my voice. And that's fine. I have no problems with that. But don't come on my channel and start writing nasty things in my comment section. Because you're only going to get blocked. If you don't like the way I speak or like the way I talk, that's absolutely fine. Just move on. Don't say anything. Just move on. Don't waste your, you know, your thug fingers to be typing something crazy. Save that for another page. Because over here, I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Okay? And you're not going to stop me from talking about anything. So, let's carry on. All right. So, hmm. The ex-girlfriend of a convicted killer who brutally murdered two women has opened up about their toxic relationship. Kelly Matthews said that she wasn't surprised to hear of Wade Wilson's arrest after their 2018 fling ended in a sick abuse. On June 12th, Wade Wilson was convicted of brutally murdering Christine Melton and Diane Ruiz in Cape Coral, Florida. Now, Melton and Ruiz were strangled by Wilson within hours of each other in October of 2019. Wilson, who was, at the, who was 25 at the time, and Melton was 35, and her friend Stephanie Sailors at the bar hours before her death. They ended the night at Melton's home and Wilson waited until her friend left to strangle her to death while she slept. Mm -mm -mm. Wade then stole Melton's car and started driving around Cape Coral when he saw Ruiz, 43, walking on the street. He asked her for directions and lured her into his car before striking. Brutally strangling, beating, and running her over with the car up to 20 times. Now, during his murder trial, um, Wilson's father, Stephen, told the court her body was left looking like spaghetti. After years of pain, the victim's family finally felt some form of justice with Wilson's conviction, and the jury is fighting for the death penalty. Speaking to NBC affiliate WPTV in 2019, Kelly Matthews said she was not surprised at all when she heard Wilson was arrested for the killings. Now, though the pair only dated for roughly four months from late 2018 to early 2019, she says there were several instances where she feared for her life. He stole my gun as a convicted felon he stole my two laptops, my PlayStation, she told the outlet. In January, Wilson was arrested on charges of grand theft and dealing stolen property in Palm Beach County, Florida. Shortly after his release from jail, the two got back together. But that is when things got worse for Matthews. He kidnapped me and almost killed me, she detailed. A month after his release, Matthews filed a police report saying that Wilson S.A.'d her on her, boy, on her birthday. 
meaning sexual assault. He started trying to choke me, she said, of, you know, in the incident, of the incident. I almost blacked out, and then he asked if I was done being stupid, she continued. He pushed me on the floorboard of my car and cut my clothes off and tied me and tied it up over my head, tied my arms together, Matthews detailed. The report, along with photos that Matthews took after the incident, detailed deep bruises and cuts all over her face. But nothing ever happened to Wilson from this incident. The investigation was closed, stating in the report that Wilson denied the allegations. The report also said that there was no witnesses and no evidence to establish probable cause for an arrest. So no one, um, excuse me, so one was never made. Now, Matthews believed that if the police would have acted then and arrested Wilson, his two victims, Diana Ruiz and Christine Milton, will still be alive today. Matthews is now in therapy because of her experiences with Wilson. And she, I'm going to show you the pictures as well. Matthews was left with horrific bruises when Wilson choked her. And Wilson was never charged for attacking Matthews. So he was never charged for attacking her. So also when he attacked those two women, Christine and Diane, the psychiatrist, Dr. Mark Mills, claimed that Wade Wilson suffered from some kind of psychotic disorder mental illness, and drug addiction. But he's not going to get out of that. He's either going to get the death penalty or he's going to get life in prison. He's never going to get out either way. So how do you guys feel about what I just read to you about um, Kelly? I feel like she had a right to tell her story. But there was another article that was in, you know, that went deeper into the situation. So I'm going to read that one for you right now. The ex-girlfriend of Wade Wilson, who is facing the death penalty for brutally murdering two women in 2019, says he was never violent towards her until he allegedly tried to kill her. Well, there's no alleged. He tried to. Okay. Now, Kelly Matthews has spoken out on TikTok about Dave Wilson after they met online in 2018, she told the news outlet that Wilson called her last year, but she blocked the jail's number. Very good for you. In a video, Matthews shared thirst trap photos of a <laughs> charismatic and smart, smiling Wilson from around that time and without his face tattoos, which now include all types of mess on it. But Matthew said Will's polite demeanor began to shift when he started using cocaine. She says they once got into a fight when she took his book bag to search it for drugs. He kicked a door and then she threw a kitchen table at him. Oh. He never hit me ever until that night. Matthew said in her TikTok video. So there were really no red flags till the end. Now, in a recent interview with a news outlet, Matthews recalled the events of February 18, 2019, when Wilson's abuse nearly resulted in her death. She said that Wade had agreed to go to a nearby rehab, but then he changed his mind and wanted to go to the one in Florida Keys which was about three hours and a half away from where they lived. They got into a fight in, in a parking lot when Matthew suggested that Wilson was lying and he really wanted to go to the Keys to meet someone down there. I got back in the car, put my seatbelt on, and that's when it started. He started choking me 
Matthews told the outlet. He choked me two or three times. I started to black out. I was freaking out. She claimed that Wilson pushed her on the floorboard of her car, cut off her clothes with a knife, and told her to stay down there until he put her in the back of the car and essayed her. At some point, he bit my face, bit me in the chin, she said, showing off the pictures from the attack in a June 15th TikTok video, which included a photo of her busted lip. Matthews also claimed he gagged her, tied a shirt around her face, and tied her hands and feet together with a used garbage bag inside the car. Now, eventually, Wilson reportedly freed Matthews before they got to the keys, handed her the car keys, and then got into another car with a woman. Matthews said she went 100 miles per hour, you know, all the way home and went straight to the police station and explained to them what happened. Now, in a TikTok video posted on June 15th, Matthews claimed the hospital took over 200 pictures of her abuse, but she never seen them and was never able to locate them. A police officer reportedly told her that he went down to the Keys and spoke to Wilson about the incident. And he told her that Matthews was, you know, sexually was into that kind of thing. He was never arrested for anything related to Matthews' assault. This man drove through a McDonald's while I was tied up in the back of my car, naked and bound and gagged. Literally, I had a t-shirt tied around my face. I had leggings in my mouth. My foot was broken because he slammed it in the door. So when I heard the trial of him doing that to Christina Melton, tying her up with her own clothes, it brought back a lot of feelings for me, she said, about one of Wilson's two dead victims. Hmm. Matthew said the police failed me so severely by not arresting Wilson and believes Melton and Diane Ruiz murders allegedly by the hands of Wilson could have been prevented. Well, it's not allegedly, but he did murder them. Could have been pre um, prevented if the detectives in her case had actually done his job. I think these women would still be alive because I would have testified against him for this. My whole family, all my friends, everyone would have stood up for this. And this detective basically said, you were into that kind of thing, so we really can't do anything about it. Hmm. Yeah. The police did fail her. They really did. But like I said, this is her story and she's allowed to tell it how she wants to tell it. You can't get mad at that. You can't say, oh, she's talking to the media. She wants time. You got to understand something. He did this to her. So he gave her the story. And she's allowed to talk about it as many times as she wants to. If anybody asks her questions about it, She's allowed to talk about it, whether you like it or not. But she didn't deserve to be called out of her name. She didn't deserve that. Now, if you feel differently from what I'm saying, you can talk to me about it in the comment section. Because I would love to know your thoughts about this as well. How do you feel about Kelly Matthews, you know, telling her story on TikTok and to the news outlets? Do you think she's looking for fame or clout, whatever it is? I don't think so. She just want her story told because guess what? She could have been a, a victim. And she could have been one of the ones who wasn't alive to tell her story. Just like Mila. Okay? For whatever reason, I don't know why she's talking to Wade because he beat her up. You know, he punched blood out of her. And now she's on the phone laughing and giggling with him and calling him baby and all this kind of stuff when he beat her. But see... To me, I feel like Mila is just, is disturbed anyway. She's insecure and she acts as if her and Wade was together for years and years. And they wasn't. Six months. Six months to be exact. 
and this man is the love of your life. Oh, we could have done so much. You know, you 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 was out of jail and you wasn't gonna go back. Please, because I think Mila would have been a victim as well. Anybody that that would say, if you would have asked me nicely to get into the car, we would have been in Miami or New Orleans, you know. So you would have gotten a car with him in a dead woman's car if he would have asked you nicely, baby, get in the car with me. And you would have gotten the car with him and rolled off into the sunset. If that doesn't prove she has some type of issues, I don't know what, what will. But I also feel like Mila is going to meet somebody like Wade. Or similar to Wade. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, this is Kelly's story. So... I just want to talk about it real quick and get you guys, um, you know, thoughts about it. And I guess I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one.